Evil Dead remake is a film that I was very excited to see. I mean, usually when, you know, Hollywood says that they're going to remake or, or reboot one of my favourite movies, I really don't want to see that happen. But with this, I was really quite interested. The reason being is that you have the original producers, um, Sam Raimi, uh, Bruce Campbell and Rob Tappert, still involved in this movie and also the fact that the director I believe his name's pronounced Fede Alvarez although I may have pronounced that incorrectly um, has said that essentially this film you know he's not interested in changing the original too much but he wants to go back to using practical effects and all the rest of it and I thought well actually this could be really interesting really good because Hollywood um, and, and modern horror as a genre has become saturated by torch porn and, and sort of CG laden bollocks so the evil dead is something that i was really looking forward to and to be honest it is a perfectly serviceable horror movie but you can't help but wonder while you're watching it why they bothered to remake it because the original is a classic and if you ask me and you know people may disagree with this but i think the original holds up despite of the somewhat ropey effects given its budget you know as a film as a whole i think the original still holds up to this day now, this film does make a, a few changes. The main character is no longer Ash, who in the original was played by Bruce Campbell. This time it's Mia, played by a girl called Jane Levy. Uh, she is essentially detoxing and trying to go cold turkey. So her friends drive her out into this uh, cabin in the woods and say, you're not leaving until all the drugs that you've become addicted to are out of your system. You know, this is it. We're, we're going to help you not leaving under any circumstances. And I've actually thought this was quite an interesting way to explain why they would go out there in the first place and why they would stay there as long as they did. So, you know, I quite liked those changes. Uh, the character of Mia as well was quite an interesting character. You know, it's not often that you have a drug addict, um, especially heroin, in a movie, you know, a female protagonist who's also a drug addict. I, I thought, you know, I quite... I quite find this character interesting and I'm interested to see what they do with it. Now, that brings me to one of my main criticisms of the movie is that she is not on screen for a lot of the film. And I feel like in having Mia either be off screen or when she is on screen, she's slight spoiler alert, although I believe, you know, these shots are in the trailer and stuff, um, she's possessed. You're left with her group of friends, none of whom are as interesting as she is, to carry the movie, and I thought that was a little bit of an oversight. I mean, I understand that it's her, you know, facing her personal demons, and that may be why they chose her to be the one who gets possessed and stuff, but I feel like the fact that she's off screen for so much of the film you sort of lose the anchor of the movie because the anchor of the first movie was Bruce Campbell's Ash. The anchor in this movie should have been Mia, but it wasn't. I feel like they sort of sidestepped that. There are moments of, you know, sheer brilliance in this movie, but they are always counteracted by a moment of sheer stupidity like the fact when the book of the dead is found it's literally it's wrapped in barbed wire wrapped in bin bags there are scrawlings all over it under no circumstances read this book out loud or any part of this book just put it down walk away you know don't read it don't read it for god's sake and then you know one of needless to say one of the group who are there read the book out loud and I just think there's probably smarter and cleverer ways to have them read the book than to do that because it was just, I'm sure any logical person, and it establishes that the character who reads the book out loud, you know, is is an intelligent guy. Um, it, 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 the fact that he reads it out, out loud after seeing all the warnings is just a little bit ridiculous. And that actually kind of took me out of the movie because any person who saw that would be like, fuck that noise, I'm not going near that. Even if you don't believe in that sort of thing, you'd be like, you know what, I'm not going to risk it. I'll just put that back in a drawer and not look at it again. So that was a little bit ridiculous. But the, where this movie really excels is in the effects. The effects are absolutely incredible. They're, they're some of the most realistic and... and most surprisingly gratuitous gore effects you're likely to see in, in recent horror cinema. And it is all done practically, and that's why the effects have a certain weight to them. You know, you feel a lot more uh, on the effects because they are practical. Um, however, I think they focused so much on the practical gore effects that they actually forgot to make the film frightening because it's, it's not a frightening movie. There, there is very little 
tension or, or, or very few scares throughout the film. I mean, it's very icky and gross, but at no point was I scared watching it, whereas I still think that the original Evil Dead is frightening. And they had the good sense back then, you know, this is a horror movie, we're going to scare the audience. Um, whereas in this movie, it's all a bit icky and it's not very scary. Um, so that's another criticism. Uh, the actual demons themselves, you know, they hint, they make some changes to the plot that, you know, maybe it's a sort of parasitic thing that possesses people and, and the demons act more like characters from J-horror, uh, you know, with the crooked neck and stuff like that. You can definitely see the influences of modern cinema on this movie. And, and that's all, you know, interesting, but I think in making the slight spoiler alert again, in making the demons some sort of parasite, it sort of takes a certain element out of the film. Now, the tree rape scene, which, you know, is the, the vastly controversial scene from the original movie, loses its teeth in this. Because in the original movie, for me, the tree raped the girl because it could and because it was evil and it was just a really fucked up scene. Whereas in this movie, you know, the, the, the tree rapes the girl in order to pass on a possession, and it's just a bit like, well, giving it a purpose, you know, it doesn't suddenly justify what is, quite frankly, an abhorrent act and scene, but it also loses the effectiveness, the effectiveness of the original. And I, I just thought, you know, certain changes like that didn't quite work. But on the whole, <clears throat> let's put it this way, for a 14-year-old boy who sneaks a copy of this from, you know, his mum and dad's DVD collection and watches it, it's going to be his favourite horror movie. It will completely work for that audience, for the same audience that 30, 20, 30 years ago, you know, watched the original Evil Dead on a, a shitty little VHS copy. Make sure if you watch this movie that you stay until the end of the credits because there is a, an extra scene there which will have fans of the original, you know, applauding. I must admit it gave me chills. So The Evil Dead, I would recommend it. I will definitely watch it again, but it was just, maybe I went in with too high expectations.